Welcome back. Our task now is to define numerical methods for solving differential equations, and the simplest of such methods is the forward Euler scheme. So, we are trying to solve differential equations on the form derivative of u as a function of t equals f, which is a function of u and a function of t. And because we are going to represent such equations on a computer, we will emphasize the necessity of discrete, discretizing them. They are discrete functions. They're only evaluated at certain points because we cannot have infinite point on the computers. So we'll write tiny case here and there, like so. If you want to learn more about uh, discrete calculus and how our functions are evaluated on a computer, I suggest you watch my discrete calculus uh, videos. There's a short series of three videos. All right, so to the forward Euler scheme. The fundamental idea of the forward Euler scheme is to approximate the derivative by a one-sided forward difference. So what we do is we write this derivative as the following, and it is approximated, so Let's emphasize that, like so. First, we evaluate u at uh, a certain time step, right? k plus 1, so it's further ahead. And we subtract at the point where we're cur currently at. This is why it's, why it's called the forward Euler. And we divide by a uh, time step, the difference between the two t's. So the difference between these are delta t, right? And we can write the shorthand form of this with just the use k plus 1 minus u k divided by delta t. Simple enough, right? And this form will uh, remove the, the left-hand side or the derivative of our equation, so we can insert it here. And what we get is simply the following. u k plus 1 minus u k divided by delta t equals f of u k and t k. A simple enough exp expression. And we can rearrange this because, so what we want is uh, u of k plus 1. So if we rearrange this equation, what we get is u of k plus 1 equals u of k plus delta t times f of u of k and t k. And uh, that's really it. So as you can see, this equation has somewhat of a recursive uh, nature. We compute the uh, the next point of uh, of our function, of our solution, uh, from the previous point. So if we start with an initial condition, we see that u1, which is our the point we're trying to compute, must depend on u0, which is uh, which must be given to us by an initial condition, times this delta t and times f of u evaluated at u0 and t0. So here you actually see very explicitly the need for an initial condition to be able to compute this. And we continue in this manner, so u2 equals u1 plus delta t f u0 t0 and, uh, and so on. But the full discrete problem, if we are going to implement this as a function, we start by u0 equals some that's a capital U function, and then we can compute all the uh, the next uh, terms or points coming after this uh, value from this simple expression. U of k, t of k, and of course we have that t of k equals k, the point we're at, or the number of uh, evaluations we've made thus far uh, times delta t, and where k is equal to 1 and all the way up to some value n. And uh, this n will determine, and this n will determine our, uh, the resolution of our solution, right? So we can, if the more n's we pick, the, the, the smaller the time step delta t will become, and the more precise our solution will be. So we see that the only input that an implementation needs to take is our, some function that is on the right hand side. We need a um, capital U zero, an initial condition. 
we need some uh, uh, time value that we want to stop at because we, we will stop at an n equal to some time value depending on our uh, resolution, right? So we can either take a capital T or an N. So we need uh, either two of these, like an N and a capital T, or a delta T and a T, and we can compute the rest. So some of them will be redundant. But let's take these as inputs now. And of course the uh, output of our function would be some uh, discrete uh, solution values, u1, u2, u3, u4, and so on. And we can also output our, our time step, t1, t2, t3, and t4, and so on. So now let us implement the forward double Euler uh, scheme as a function in Python. So here we go, I have an empty file ready. We need some library to do this. I use, usually go with uh, numerical Python, NumPy, as NP. And we say that we are going to compute the forward Euler. And our input is a function, an initial condition, a uh, capital T, and some number of uh, points. Right, and uh, what this function will do, let's just write that down so we have it. Solve u, derivative of u, equal to f u, function of u and t, where the zeroth u is given by the initial condition with n steps until capital T. So now everyone is sure what this function is supposed to do. Okay, the first thing we want to do is to allocate some space for our t's. So these are the uh, solutions that will the, the function should return eventually. So this uh, will uh, make this a zero erase initially. n plus one, because we are starting counting from zero and go all the way to t. So we need one more. And u and p zeros, n plus one. Oh the exact same thing really and then we will set the zeroth u to our initial condition as we said and we can also set our zero t to zero which it will already be but just for the sake of explicitity explicit English is difficult all right and our um, time step will now be determined by the capital T, the last time step, divided by n. Now, and if you're using Python 2, you will have to do something like this, but I'm using Python 3, so I will disregard that. And then we can solve it. So, 4k, where kh is each step in range and we are going to first compute the next t, which will be k plus 1. And that will be the previous one plus the time step. And then we compute our solutions, the solution to our function, uk plus... And now we need to remember what we wrote earlier, dt times the function evaluated at u, the current u, the current solution, and the current k. So here we see very explicitly almost the same thing that we wrote when we wrote mathematics. And when we're done, what we want to do is to we return both the u and the t. And that should really be it. Now the time has come to test this uh, implementation of the forward Euler method. I'm hoping it corrects. It looks correct to me. Uh, and we're going to do that by the simplest uh, differential equation we can think of, where the derivative of uh, u is simply equal to u. So 
What function do you know where the derivative is the same? Well, it's an exponential function, which will be the solution. So it's easy, easy to test, test against. So let's define the function uh, f takes in u and t and returns u. Right. And uh, then we compute the solution with the forward Euler scheme. It needs to take in the function and an initial condition, oh, which will set to one. And we'll do that for four, up to four. And let's first do 10. Actually, let's do a few time steps. Right, so let's do a for loop for i or n in range. So we'll do 5, 10, and 20. And we'll see how the solution improves and we'll also plot them. So let's uh, import a plotting tool. And then we'll plot u against t with a label. So where n is equal to like time step n. Because that's what we would assume that the solution gets better and better as we increase the number of, um, well, increase the resolution of our function, right? And let's also just plot the actual solution so we know that it is correct. Uh, with a, we'll, we'll have a very fine uh, t array from um, 0 to uh, 4, and we'll have a thousand points. That should do it. And we'll also plot the exponential function of this t fine. Like so, and we'll label it exact. And then we'll show it. How excited are you? Go. That's incorrect, I think. And the reason is it incorrect is because I changed the T's and the U's. One more time. Oh, and we also need to show the legend. And we'll also make these line style dash. That's something we, I think that's possible, yeah. So let's let's try it again. Yeah, it doesn't work. Probably because it needs to be a uh, a string. Here we go. And as expected, we see that we are approaching the exact solution. I, well, it is exact um, in terms of the resolution of this figure. So, and we also see that these, uh, th this is a really bad one, n equals 5 is somewhat, uh, yeah, it, it goes in, in, in ticks, sort of. We can probably do even better. If we write 100, we probably get re very close to the real, the real function. There we go. Neat. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we will try to study a system of differential equations with the same concept that we just used. See you then.